thing money can't buy is your mama. She's for free and everybody knows it. Avianca 052, we just uh, lost two engines and we need the priority, please. Avianca 052, turn left heading 250 and intercept the localizer. Roger. Avianca 052, you have, uh, uh, you have enough fuel to make it to the airport? Avianca 052, radar contact lost. The date was the 25th of January 1990. An airliner carrying 155 passengers and crew crashes into a Long Island suburb after it runs out of fuel. How did this happen? The plane was a Boeing 707, a four-engine narrow body that was purchased from Pan Am in 1977. With Pan Am originally purchasing the plane in 1967, making that plane 22 years old at the time of the accident. Piloting that day was a 51-year-old Captain Laureano Cavides. Also, the 28-year-old first officer Mauricio Klotz, and the 45-year-old flight engineer, Matias Moyano. Avianca Flight 52, departs Medellin, at 1510, heading for New York. Weather at Kennedy Airport was bad. Unfortunately, the crew of Avianca Flight 52 was unaware of the weather conditions. It had caused many missed approaches, with some diverting to their alternate. There were many planes waiting to land, which forced the controllers to place most of them into a holding pattern, which also included Avianca Flight 52. Starting at Norfolk, at 7.04, Flight 52 was given their first holding instructions. They stayed in this holding pattern, for 19 minutes. Then by 7.43, Above Atlantic City, Avianca was placed in another holding pattern for an additional 29 minutes. By this time, they were utilizing their reserve fuel. At 8.18, they were placed in another holding pattern, for additional 29 minutes. The Avianca crew, had realized the predicament they found themselves. They realized their fuel was low. Way too low to divert to their alternate airport. They advised the controller of their situation, explaining that they are running low on fuel. The captain declares their situation to his first officer as an emergency, but the first officer, not fluent in English, uses the term priority, instead of the standard industry term, of emergency. According to the controller, Flight 52 did not declare an emergency. But, the controller, then replies, by asking Avianca, how much fuel they had at their disposal. The flight engineer calculated that they had approximately 5 minutes of fuel remaining. With that bit of info, the controller, then hands Avianca over to the approach controller. But the first controller fails to disclose the fuel issues Avianca was experiencing. That they had less than 5 minutes of fuel remaining. At 8.56, Flight 52 eventually receives their approach instructions. They had enough fuel for maybe one attempt at landing. At 9.20, they were cleared for landing, but due to the weather, making visual contact with the runway was impossible. And they had to make visual contact before they could attempt a landing. During their descent, they drop below the glide slope. As they start to climb, they experience some wind shear, which slows them down, making them lose altitude. With the runway still not visible to the pilots, Flight 52 decides to abort their landing. Even though they are literally out of fuel, Flight 52 was instructed to circle back and line up with the runway for another attempt. Avianca 052 heavy, uh, I'm going to bring you about 15 miles northeast and then turn you back on for the approach. Is that fine with you and your fuel? 
Very good, sir. Thank you very much. Avianca 52, climb maintains 3,000. Uh, negative, sir. We were just riding out of fuel. We, we were good. Okay, 3,000, I'll be good. Okay, turn left heading 310, sir. 310, Avianca 05, as they head back for another attempt at landing, the crew's worst fears had been realized. Flight 52 runs out of fuel. At approximately 9.34, a controller radios into Avianca, but there is no response. It's too late for Flight 52. The plane had already crashed on a hillside, in a sparsely populated residential area, near Oyster Bay. Due to the lack of fuel, there was no fire at the crash site. Simplifying the rescue attempts, which continued throughout the night. From the engineer not detailing their fuel situation, to the first officer's use of the term, priority and not forgetting the controller failing to disclose to the approach controller that Flight 52 was running out of fuel. So, who do you think is to blame? It confused many why the first officer would use the term priority to declare an emergency but it was later determined that the term priority was used in a Boeing bulletin. And in that bulletin, priority was used in relation with the topic of fuel starvation. Like, comment, subscribe.